This is the Pro Audio Suite Podcast. Quick Bites. Welcome to another Pro Audio Suite Quick Bite. This week we're talking about uh, a, a new browser called Brave. Now, I saw, George, you were talking about this on Facebook uh, just the other day. What's the story? Yeah, so um, this web browser has been around apparently for quite some time because I posted about it on Facebook and some people are like, I've been on this for years. <laughs> um, but they were being promoted on uh, This Week in Tech, the podcast that I love now for many years. And that's how I heard about it. Which is not as good as our podcast. No, course. nowhere near. It pales in comparison. No, uh, absolutely. <laughs> but um, <laughs> the uh, the concept of this web browser is that it's... Um, it's running on Chromium, so it's it it'll support and act like Chrome to all the websites, and uh, you know, arguably, Chrome is the most widely supported browser, you know, for a lot of reasons. So the beauty of it is it's going to run like Chrome, so it's going to browse everything. But the the big issue with Chrome is that it, because it's owned by Google, um, its job is to harvest your user data. They want to know where you go how long you spend there, and what you buy. So that makes it the least private of all the web browsers. So Brave's concept in comparison is that we don't share anything about you that you don't want them to know. So it's really locked down. It blocks ads really, really well. It's super, super locked down. And as a consequence, it's way faster. Like it loads much faster on most web pages because it's stripping out so much content from the site. You know, it's not loading so much crap. And uh, mm. that's just alone is worth the price of admission, which of course is free. It doesn't cost anything yeah. to use it. Yeah. But um, Which begs the question, how do they monetize this? Yeah. Right. So how do they monetize it, right? If they're blocking ads, how do they monetize it? So what they've done, is, which is just brilliant, is they've partnered with this other f- company that, you can basically is sort of like an ad network and you can basically rack up credit for seeing specific ads that are served to you through this service called Uphold. And Uphold verify your identity. They make sure you are who you are and they track ads that you've viewed and give you credit for seeing the ads. So what they're basically doing is telling the advertisers Your ad has been viewed, and it's been viewed by this person. But if you don't want to see the ads, you can add money to your account to pay for the ads so you never have to see them. And this is wow. this is the way they monetize it. So <laughs> it's like they're blackmailing you. You know, if you don't want to see ads, pay up. <laughs> well, but that's yeah. the thing is, like, we all know that anything that's free, it's free because you're the product. So in this case, the they point have is a way. like nothing is free, right? Let's be honest. Nothing is free. If it's free, it's because you're the product. For some people, free is important. They're not going to justify paying for something that's already free. But for others that are extremely sensitive about their privacy, they'd be happy to pay for something that doesn't sell their information. So that's this browser. YouTube does it. You know, if you don't want to see the ads, you can give them five bucks a month. Yeah. And you won't see those ads anymore. And I'll tell you, it's worth it. <laughs> I forgot to renew it one time, my credit card number chain. And now it's like, oh, there's damn ads again. Yeah. Yep. How's Source Connect now going on uh, Brave? Is, is it working? The audio goes in, but I can't get the audio out. So in other words, it'll show my mic, but I don't hear the receive. Because I think Brave is so incredibly sensitive to incoming information. You know, they're very, very secure. It's blocking it on some level. So, so far, I've, I've not gotten it to work. But again, I've been using it for precisely, what, five hours. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure that at some point, Robert will pass that over to Rebecca and she'll get right on it. <laughs> she'll get, I mean, she'll... actually, actually, Rebecca might not have the work to do. It might be the, 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 the guys at Brave because usually the reason why, you know, the, the Chrome variants stop working with whatever version of Chrome it is is because Chrome has updated. And right now, I know that Source Connect now is operating with the most current version of Chrome. And so Brave being a Chromium-based browser, I'm kind of guessing possibly the reason why it's not working is actually it's running on a older version of Chromium. So maybe as that's updated to the current version of Chromium, while they keep all their, you know, the privacy and what they have that makes them special, it might start working um, in that case. 
So would that mean that if, if George is now having trouble with Source Connect now, would that mean that others such as that, maybe even Hightail might be having similar um, issues? It's it's quite possible that that anything that works with Chrome could have issues that depending on how you know furious the update cycle is with things that specifically handle real time audio. So I, I can talk about Source Connect now for sure, um, but I, I know that there's been occurrences of changes in Chrome causing disruptions in all of the various services that rely on Chrome. Um, it's entirely possible that. It affects, and I, I believe it has happened many times that a change in Chrome has sort of affected the broad range of them. And then, of course, there's you know fixes that come out at various speeds. So, is it constantly chasing Chrome when they update to uh, make that sure that is definitely one of the issues? Yeah. yeah. So it's like chasing Chrome, and that's why there's these standalone versions of um, you know we, we we make sort of what 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 we call a mini browser, and essentially it's a frozen version of Chrome. But there's still a ver- an issue with that is that eventually as Chrome updates, then we have to um, update to the current to work with the current version of Chrome, which means we then have to go back and update the mini browser to work with that same version of Chrome. And that eventually happens. And then there's a, you know, a plateau in the update cycle until it all happens again. Uh, because there's, there are different uh, businesses that run using a Chrome platform to, to operate the, their audio transfer, why, why are we still doing that? Well, you know, I mean, because you've got Source Connect standard, Source Connect Pro. Right, those are immune to all the, 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 the changes and, and what happens in, in sort of the consumer communications market. Those are uh, dedicated applications, and so we, we, we've got better control over, the, over those and generally we're able to keep up with the operating system changes, but we're not as affected by the changes in, in browsers, which are far more frequent than operating systems for the most part. So wouldn't it be better like for someone like me or someone like you guys who are working audio to just forget using anything that works on a, on a browser and just use something that works directly? Sure. I mean, I, I, I think that there's definitely... In a sense, arguments for both, and, and the way I see it is the professional studio to studio, talent to studio connections. Those, especially done where the connection is supposed to be, you know, recorded on the far end, and not not some sort of I'll record on either end, and we'll eventually merge the files together later, or I'm just listening and send me the file later. But where they're recording on the far end, putting it right into the spot or whatever they're working on, you know, editing to time. Then, then you want something that's going to connect and essentially hold on to the connection, uh, a connection that's really engineered for fidelity and not just necessarily intelligibility. That's what Source Connect Standard and Pro can do. On the other hand, where you're looking for something that's a little bit more ad hoc, so maybe the party you're working with on the other side is not recording you um, or they're just not able to get in front of a system that's like that, so all they have is a browser, there's some huge convenience with, hey, Chrome is pretty much everywhere. Just launch it and log in. And um, I think those yeah. are the connections where they're better than a phone patch, uh, but not necessarily something like, um, you know, like the Source Connect and, and a proper ISDN connection does, not a connection over a browser. Interesting. Well, um, I know a few people are talking about Brave at the moment, so hopefully um, we've covered off a few things in there. This show was mixed by Voodoo Sound. Edit by Andrew Peters using Source Connect Now and Rode Microphones with technical support from George the Tech Whittem. Don't forget to subscribe and like us. Yeah.